Hello, what up party people? We are doing the, uh, let's find out what the twos are telling us, 2022 Tarot Oracle Extravaganza reading. This is January. I'm really excited. It's um, such an exciting theme already starting off the year and it's it just goes along with all the astrology going on right now. So I'm going to dive in. So first we pulled Gnosis. From the uh, the wild and un unknown archetypes, and gnosis is the kind of knowing and wisdom that comes from the energy or the uh, information processing center of the heart and the energy center of the heart, like we were talking about in the last video, and so. The heart is the bridge to the higher self and to the spirit. And so that is what the Gnosis card starts opening up is this portal within. It's like the deeper in you go, the further out into the cosmos you will find yourself. And connected to the, this this realm, the source, you're, you know, wonder about like what lies beyond, you know, this this reality that we know what's beyond this dimension not just the multiverse but like beyond physical beingness like what is all that so that mystery and um that that deep sort of uh mystical siren might come a calling for you this month and kind of set you up for the year as well to sort of start pursuing um just your curiosity about the deeper mysteries of life and those deeper questions. And so you'll do that through opening the heart center. And Gnosis is the kind of knowing and wisdom that lives within you. You know, when Christ said the kingdom um, of heaven is within you, it, it, he was also talking about the fact that like we're born with this like innate knowing and this knowledge because the source of all that is is permeating through every cell of our being all the time. And we can tap into this information that we don't think that we have in our rational mind, but that it does reside within us in our heart. And so the shadow side of this card is like being too literal or being too attached to what you can see, feel, smell, hear, and touch. You know, it's like some people are very literal and they, you can't even make like a, like an ironic joke to them because they're like, well, that's not really how, that's not accurate. You know, <clears throat> that's not a fact. And it's like, <sighs> Let go and be willing to at least entertain childlike curiosities and imaginings and see where that takes you. But yeah, so that's Gnosis. That's that, that deep, um, ancient, primal wisdom that goes beyond time and space that lives and dwells within us that we can tap into. And it is going to come tap it on our shoulder. Woo! It's like my favorite thing. Um, is, you know, the mystical mysteries and questions of the universe. Um, so next, we pulled Golden Egg from the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit. And this card is about tapping in to the heart, into the heart chakra and a hata, and opening it. And you can work with um, Malachite or um, morganite, or rose quartz, um, green calcite, emerald. There's a, a lot of good stones. Look for stones that are good for the heart chakra or the fourth chakra, um, that opening. But this is about connecting to that higher guidance that the inner spirit guide, the Holy Spirit, or it might be um, your higher self coming through, guiding you and leading you. Whatever you are starting to feel an authentic connection with, um, you know, it might change. Sometimes it might be Jesus coming through the heart center. Like he connects through that portal, that bridge. Um, Holy Spirit, you know, um, guardian angels, I feel like they're, they're almost in the astral zone. But I think, I mean, they, that, that opens a whole can of worms. We're not going into that. We're not going into that right now. But this is about connecting to that higher guidance through the heart. And it starts with sitting in stillness and just being open and willing and soft and malleable. Oh, like water. 
the overall of the year, you know, the overall arching um, theme of the year had to do with water and working with water and, and healing with water. And one of the notes in the book that it said that I wanted to mention was that water is the only thing that can, you know, exist in like all the different um, forms. Like it can be a, a vapor, a gas, it can be a solid, it can be a liquid, it can be... Is that it? I don't know. I guess fire is its own thing, but it'll it can exist in different physical forms. And so it the question asks you, what phase of water is your life in right now? Is it frozen? Is it um, boiling, steaming? Is it a vapor? Is it like not really very solid? It's more ethereal and like fantasy based. You know, is it? Does it? Can you touch it? You know and what? What, um, what is the condition of the cycle of the water? Because maybe that can give you some clues as to how to move it into another cycle that you want, would rather be in. So water healing um, <clears throat> and connecting through the heart bridge, the eye of the heart, which the Greek term is the, the new, I think. I'm not, I may not be pronouncing that right. I, I learned that from Megan Watterson in her book, um, Mary Magdalene Revealed, which is like life-changing. You will like it. make it your bathtub book and just cry and it, it's a good cry. Um, okay, so up next we have Will of Fortune. Something, the tides are turning in our favor, people. If you show up, it is going to show up for you this year. It's like all about like what you put in, you are going to get out. And the wills of fate are turning in our favor and we are moving on to happier days and I'm so excited about it. And just remember that the will of life is always turning and nothing lasts forever. And we savor the good times and we know that the, the bad times are only gonna last so long. And we are saying so long to the bad times because they were the last two years and we're in a new cycle now. So we are in the cycle of the star, 17 card. I effing knew that Nike was gonna come out. I just knew it. I thought she was gonna come out in the general, like overall year overview, but she came out for January. I'm so excited. Nike is all about ambition. She is just do it, just do it. Get out there, put your put your shoes on, put your comfy, supportive shoes on. It's gonna be the, a long hike, an uphill climb, but we're doing this because it's only um, a period of discomfort to set you up for beyond comfort, so it's worth it. So Nike goes out, goes full force, takes charge. Nike is the most ambitious. She is, um, I would call her a masculine feminine energy. Um, fiery. It's the 38 card, which is reduces to 11, which is again about one and one coming together, making a one from two, um, two digits, making one digit. It's about partnerships and pairs, pairings, pairings this year. So, um, bring your ambition into and, and bring, you know, bring the, the, the consciousness around the values that you have about what you want to pair yourself up with, what you want to pair your resources and your ambition. What do you want to pair your ambition up with? What do you want to pair your ambition up with this year? And it's, it's particularly in January, it's a good time to get focused and, and uh, around a plan and get clarity around it. Oh, <clears throat> Also, what was important about, um, I believe it was the Gnosis card, was that there are some periods where you are in the great unknown and you cannot know that unless you've been there and like faced like deep, deep uncertainty for a long period of time and, and almost know that you're supposed to be in it. You're supposed to be in that void, in the abyss, in the unknown. and in the chaos and just not have any kind of guidance about how to go forward because that is the crucible where your metal gets made and it builds faith and it builds like this fine-tuned like you can hear a pin drop kind of sharpness with that intuition because you're like waiting to hear something and you know you're not getting any hits and so when that when those hits do start coming you're like okay that makes that makes so much sense now and you are supposed to be 
in this in-between period where you don't know what's happening. So that was part of it. It was about that period, that divine fog, that, that's, that, that um, intentional time of uncertainty that's like behind us, that's coming, like we're coming out of the fog and things are becoming clearer. We're starting to get more clarity. Um, there was also something important about, um, oh, um, once you have lived and known something, you can't unknow it. So when we talk about this year being about like integrating the things that we have learned and like the different aspects and different parts of ourselves, um, it's like about embodying those lessons is about like physically like taking them into your life and making your decisions based on, okay, whoa, I'm, I'm at a crossroads here, having, like, thinking about taking into account all the things that I'm learning and pushing myself and growing, now how am I going to make this decision? So it's about actually implementing the things that you're learning in your life, not just being like, well, I love learning about spirituality, but then you don't, like, follow up with any action, and then you're like, why is my life a wreck? And it's like, well, you're not implementing. You have to implement. It's like follow through. you got to follow through. So, <clears throat> the kind of knowing that you know from experience, from embodiment, and that's the truth. And that's the truth that sets you free. That whole thing that, like, Jesus talked about, like, once you know the truth and you can't, and the know, you will live the truth and the truth will set you free. It's about having that living experience and taking that wisdom from your experience. When somebody tries to tell you something and you're like, Psh, you can't tell me that. I've already been there. i already done it. I already got the t-shirt. I know about this. Trust me. I've been there. I've done that. I've got experience in this area. You don't even know what you're talking about. It's that kind of thing, but it's like the deepest part of that within you. And like that far out abstract, like I can't quite put a pinpoint on how to express this mystery coming forward but I can feel it and I feel it coming through and I'm starting to see patterns and I'm starting to decipher what it's all meaning and for people who are in the beginning of a spiritual awakening um I would say make it a mantra and a prayer to ask your you know to ask for um being able to understand the parts and the pieces and the patterns and how the things all fit together into play how it all fits together um, that's a great way to navigate through uncertain times and how to navigate your putting your ear to the ground and then like surfing the wave of energy of life. Excuse me. Next, we have the emperor. And I think that he is not the controlling emperor, although with Capricorn energy of this month, with being from the Capricorn new moon, we can have a tendency to get too severe and too stern and too controlling. So don't get too controlling, but definitely get organized and put the systems in place that need to be in place and then start implementing those, making the habits, showing up regularly as scheduled, keep following through and keep following up and just set yourself up for success by making it simple as simple as can be small steps um stay like give yourself small wins that add up over time consistency small consistency makes a bigger difference than like big binges okay so just think about that so um that's that divine masculine energy again from what was it the elk from the overall view so Emperor is going to be, I have a feeling, a big theme for the year. And he's a four, so he's a multiple of two. So he's about that square, that foundation. So foundations are being set, getting organized, and sticking with the plan with discipline. Underneath him, we have Page of Cups, who's bringing in a message or an opportunity. This page is also the energy of you know, fresh budding naivete and, you know, not being so jaded by the things that we've experienced. It's like that fresh, young, like naive, that romantic energy of the Knight of Cups. This is the Page of Cups. This is like the initial, maybe um, the, the earliest stirrings of that maybe are going to get rooted in January, which Venus is retrograde until January 29th. So, you know, there is that feeling of going back and looking about, looking back at things about um, what we really value 
And so that's also about like, you know, emotional renewal and psychic sensitivity. And there's going to be a lot of forward movement um, with eight of wands and like spiritual downloads coming in. So unblocking things, getting patterns in place, tapping into the subconscious of the water, the water symbol with the page of water and getting into those subconscious patterns that are setting you up with these limiting beliefs reprogramming that cancel clear delete and choosing to like to hold like recraft your beliefs so that so that they will support you and sustain be help you be sustaining of your energy going forward they will sustain your mood they will sustain your vibration next oh my gosh we got emperor again but we got it from the modern witch tarot deck so this emperor is i would say a um a, a representation of the masculine feminine energy um and those that that sort of combination of the energy spectrum but it's literally um she's more of a they maybe i shouldn't have said she then but the character is you know i can't hurt her feelings she's she's um she's cartoon but this is a, a more of an androgynous born female character and I would say that as the emperor, this would represent symbolically a, a feminine energy that is super organized, super driven, knows how to get things done, but is also a receiver, can receive help, can um, get off the beaten path and follow her instincts if she is just like the, the intuition is going this direction or maybe like choose beauty and creativity and like, you know, luxuriate the experience or make it more rich. Um, the feminine would be more in tune with the psychic gifts. So like literally these two cards together is like me right now trying to like follow my intuition and my psychic gifts by organizing myself to make a video and then put it out into the world. That is very much like the combination of the feminine emperor uh, and the, the traditional cisgendered masculine emperor here. <clears throat> Awesome. I love that. That's so fun. Okay, cool. So in closing statements, I would say that January is going to be a month where we get in touch with what is sub driving us subconsciously so we can get clear on what we want and what is a sustainable game plan for us that's going to feel good, that's going to foster that sense of playfulness and that new romantic spirit and that the youthful enthusiasm and sensitivity and naivete and it's going to fuel our ambition because we are so excited and playful about what we're putting our energy into. At the same time, we're really going to be tapping into that inner guidance. And the more that we get into that childlike playfulness, the more that, that heart chakra is going to open up and we're going to connect with that Gnosis, that deep wisdom within and that connection to the, the guidance from the higher self and the, and our spiritual, a whole spiritual team that's, that's back there behind the scenes, behind the curtains, like pulling the strings, making deals and, wheeling and dealing and then the wheel of fortune is smiling on us this month things are gonna fall into place and we're going to be supported by the universe and by god manifested through as the universe who's always sustaining us every step of the way <laughs>